Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. Today we visit with Joanne McCoy out of Washington, Missouri, who will be featuring a featured artist, Ron Emig. Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts, coming to you from Washington, Missouri today in the Room for Art Gallery. My special guest today is Ms. McCoy. Uh, well, I'd like to say, if you'll join me, welcoming Ms. McCoy to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm truly excited to um, turn the spotlight on you today and the Room for Art Gallery. And I understand you do have a featured artist today, Ron Emig. So I'd say welcome to Spotlight on the Arts, Joanne. Thank you, Ray. It's wonderful to be here. This gallery opened March of 2021, and we're so excited because we have all Missouri artists, over 30 artists. Excellent, excellent. Well, this is your first visit uh, with me on Spotlight on the Arts, and hope we have many more. I've been looking forward to our interview for weeks now, and uh, so it's great to have you on the show. First, please share with the viewers a little bit about Joanne McCoy. Well, growing up, I was always into art. As a kid, I would enter art in every category at the Washington Town and Country Fair to make sure I got lots of blue ribbons and even some trophies. Uh, because of my dad's art talent, uh, who was a, a great mentor and inspiration, I continued to do art all through high school. Um, we uh, have a family business of signs, and we did a lot of art in the sign business. I was involved in the sign business for about 35 years and president of the family business for about 20. Retired from that, started a business with my Mary Kay, as well as continued with the art, helping dad every season, doing pop-up art shows, all the festivals. It was a lot of fun. And for years doing art shows, I was ready to retire the home gallery and step up to the plate and open our own gallery, but of course we wanted to feature lots of other Missouri talent. Excellent, excellent. And the gallery is awesome. So many well-known artists within the gallery, so I'm, I'm really excited to uh, let you in on a few of these um, artists within the gallery uh, with the tour that uh, Joanne will be uh, giving us here in a couple of minutes. So basically you would say you was inspired by, at an early age, by dad, I guess, yes. and father. Yeah. I met uh, uh, father, Jim Peters, at the State Fair a few years ago uh, when he had his uh, set up for the signs on one of your travels, I guess you could say, in the exhibit. So uh, again, we can't have, uh, we don't have Jim with us today, but uh, I think we're in good hands. So <laughs> I want to say uh, hello to Jim. And uh, thanks for his um, support with us, the Spotlight on the Arts here these last few years. And also becoming a, a part, uh, having an entry on my show, uh, Department of Natural Resources, uh, Conservation um, Nature Center, uh, called Runge Conservation Nature Center in Jeff City for the last uh, two months. So uh, thank you for uh, providing us a, a copy of uh, one of his uh, pieces. Uh, awesome artwork, as you'll see as we take the tour. Well, let's go ahead and um, invite the viewers to take that tour. We'll be all right with you. So this section in the gallery is featuring my father, Jim Peters, and he is a self-taught artist and loves the challenge of watercolor. So everything from wildlife to still life, 
His latest is the Missouri Symbols. Then we go on to uh, pieces that have creative titles, like the Buffalo is Three's a Crowd. Wildlife uh, is his main inspiration, as well as places he's traveled to, the Norwegian Sheep. The detail in his watercolor is something that he's very proud of. He likes everything to look real. So he'll work on one piece at a time, get out his little fine brushes, and have some incredible detail. And now we're going to feature Larry Pogue, a metal artist from here in Washington, with his incredible imagination and an acrylic piece. We have a woodsmith from St. Charles. Mark makes these storm, takes storm down trees from Cass County and does some amazing woodcraft, natural carving, walnut, cherry, oak, brush holders, jewelry, and some unique woodcraft wall hangings. Gay Ann Hutton from Labadee, Missouri makes these amazing ceramics and glass fish. The Shattered Glass Group has some amazing pieces at the gallery. We all know how to break the glass, but then that can be taken and make, make some amazing art. Classes are also available from Shattered Glass, so they can teach you how to make some art yourself. Anita from St. Clair, Missouri paints on glass does some amazing vases as well as wine glasses. So then there's no confusion on which glass is yours because you'll get your favorite. It's a loaded brush, one stroke method. Tony from Washington takes these photographs. Mounted on metal, they're featured with national parks and monuments throughout the United States. We also have Metal Craft by my husband Andy McCoy, bead rolling and engraving, and some great fabrication. This area of the gallery features Tammy Elbert and her photography, specializing in wild horses, mules, storms, and she can also make puzzles out of any of her photographs. I won't play anymore, but you can come and enjoy some ukuleles built by Mark Spann, Washington, Missouri. We also feature Ortman Woodcraft, butcher blocks and cutting boards, serving trays, Ortman Woodcraft. hand-painted silk scarves, marbled scarves, and ice-dyed jerseys. 
a must have. All created by Rose Munzig, Washington, Missouri. Come visit the Washington Forge. Blacksmith Pat McCarty. He is the best of Missouri hands artist. Vicki LaRue from St. Clair, Missouri can ex accessorize your outfit with her beautiful jewelry pieces. These are all originals by Mike Phelps. He's an award-winning plein air artist from Augusta, Missouri. He also comes to the gallery and teaches watercolor classes. So sign up. Baskets by Laura from Fenton, Missouri. So proud to have Ron Ferkel featured in Room for Art Gallery. Ron is from Washington and has also been awarded several duck stamps and a trout stamp. Come see his work. Ray Mueller, Washington, Missouri. Originals by Mary Aubuchon, Washington, Missouri. If you need some abstract, come see Sally Kennedy Haddocks and her original pieces. Exciting to have Rick J. Original Paintings now available in our gallery. If you need a pop of color, come see Elizabeth Manhart and her mixed media pieces. Roxanne is our fiber artist, so if you need the ultimate bookmark, come see us, are some beautiful wall art in fiber. Kelly is our pet portrait from Eureka, Missouri. Very unique airbrushing on real sand dollars created by airbrush artist Fred Schulmeyer. Art by Anita from Eureka, Missouri featured at the gallery specializing in colored pencil, ink, and acrylic. Cityscapes by John Pills, Washington, Missouri.
Some Pleasant Pastels by Pat Shepard, Union, Missouri. David Arnold, artist from Washington, Missouri. Originals and Jigle Prints. Well, thank you, Joanne, once again for the tour. Uh, that was a lot of excellent artists that we've got to take a look at. And I want to thank you also once again for the uh, uh, artist piece that uh, you submitted in remembrance, or not remembrance, but in, in recognition of your father's work, Jim Peters, the, thank you. the turkey that we saw earlier. So thank you very much. Well, it's time for a break. That was a very good uh, informational first segment. So now we'll uh, take time for a break. So make yourself comfortable. We'll be right Love back you. with you. And don't forget now, we'll be right back uh, as um, Joanne introduces her featured artist, today. So stay with us. There's a lot more here on Spotlight on the Arts. The crayon box that talked. While walking in a toy store the day before today, I overheard a crayon box with many things to say. I don't like red, said yellow, and green said nor do I. And no one here likes orange, but no one knows just why. We are a box of crayons that doesn't get along. Said blue to all the others. Hmm, something here is wrong. Well, I bought that box of crayons and took it home with me and laid out all the colors so the crayons could all see. They watched me as I colored with red and blue and green and black and white and orange and every color in between. They watched as green became the grass and blue became the sky. The yellow sun was shining bright on white clouds drifting by. Colors changing as they touch, becoming something new. They watched me as I colored. They watched till I was through. And when I'd finally finished, I began to walk away. And as I did, the crayon box had something more to say. I do like red, said yellow, and green said so do I. And blue, you were terrific so high up in the sky. We are a box of crayons. Each one of us unique. But when we get together, the picture is complete. Welcome back to Spotlight on the Arts, coming to you from Washington, Missouri. And um, Joanne McCoy, who is the gallery owner here at Room for Art. Welcome back to the second part of the show. If you would, Joanne, please introduce your featured artist for today. Absolutely. I'm so excited to have Ron Immig, Union, Missouri artist, oil paintings and sculptures. Excellent. Very good. Thank you so much. And welcome to the show there, Mr. Emig. Thank you, sir. Ron, I appreciate it. Great. I want to ask Ron some questions naturally, get uh, everyone identified uh, with uh, Mr. Ron Emig. Um, well, welcome. So Thank please you. share a little bit about Ron Emig, if you would look at the camera and well, talk to our viewers out there worldwide and <laughs> give them a little bit of a picture. I was born and raised in St. Louis, but lived in this area since 86. Have two children and two grandchildren. And uh, I've been involved with art all my life, basically, all since I could life. hold a pencil. You know, oh, excellent. Always been drawing horses and cowboys, and oh. it's what I do today. 
So you're kind of sort of the cowboy artist in our neighborhood, you might say. I guess so. I guess you yeah, could great. say that. So what basically inspired you? You know, we talk on the show, uh, different artists and I, and they, uh, we talked about sort of being in our blood or our DNA, as they call it now. I know I was drawing when I was young, Absolutely. four or five years yeah. old. So. Do you can do you, you ever feel like you were born in the wrong century? I mean, yes, yes, yeah, yes. That's the way I feel. Yeah. So um, it, it's just the old west has always appealed to me. Yeah. Oh yes, we were probably same here. Dad was a cowboy singer back in the forties, you know, thirties, yeah. cool. when all the western singers, cowboy singers, he used to call them. Uh, you know, I'll show you on down. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I've always been able to identify that. And we both share the. Arizona, we both share Arizona in our art, and uh, naturally, I guess, living there f uh, for a while, mm -hmm. in your case also. Yeah, well, I've gone out west for photo shoots for oh, reference see. material uh, to do this art, and uh, the ones that are the western genre, that's where they're from. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Well, living out there for 40 years, it's uh, still miss it. The sun rises and the sun sets, especially. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, well, that's great. Uh, well, what is your subject and favorite subject matter? Would I, would well, I, I would ask? say the Old West is my top, but uh, I have a fine spot in my heart for wildlife also. Wildlife also. All right. And, and your favorite medium is, I understand, well, we're looking at two different awesome mediums that uh, <laughs> Ron has put together here. He's going to take us on a tour of this. So your favorite medias I've described to our viewers. I are, would say they're equally split between oil painting and sculpture, bronze sculpture, but uh, bronze has a special place in my heart. Oh, I've, yes. I'm have new to that. I've only been doing that for about 10 years. I was an oil painter before that. And you, you're like me, you love the magic of oils probably when Absolutely. you turn to the brush. You got it. That's for sure. Well, uh, I'd like to, if you could, step us through the procedure that you uh, use to complete a project. Now, we're dealing with two different uh, uh, mediums, so... Correct. Uh, there, there are some similarities. I usually start with a reference photo, one that I've taken from a photo shoot. But then I'll do uh, some thumbnail sketches and uh, to work out the composition. Once that's done, then I'll enlarge it to fit the canvas or in case of a sculpture, then you have to worry about your armature and, and you build it to fit, you know. Whatever. Yes, yes. Yeah. So you start with a sketch like many of us have sure. to write. Absolutely. I take a photograph. Once it's in my head, it seems like then I can paint it. Correct. But yeah. until then I get it all planned out, it yeah. works out great. Absolutely. Oh, great. Well, is there a technique or one process you'd like to share with the viewers today that you would like to share? Negro process. Most folks are familiar with the, the painting aspect, of, you know, and that, but I get more questions on doing the sculpture, you know. Yes. How do you do this? Do you fire it in a kiln? Do you put it in an oven? Do you do this, do that? And I go through the explanation with them, when, and they're truly surprised at the uh, involvement that there is in doing a bronze from it's just, start to finish. It's just not a simple process, no, is it's it? it a uh, involved. And it's almost scientific, mm -hmm. the heat of the oven, the time in the yeah, oven, or yeah. time in the kiln, yeah, I guess yeah. it is. Well, they do, I do what is called a lost wax technique. A and, lost wax. Uh, yes, and it, basically what I do, and I'll show you later in the tour um, of one of the originals that I, I worked on oh, in the clay, but that clay is then uh, formed into a, a mold. Uh, they made a mold of it oh, I see. out of silicone rubber, and then they make a wax cast of that. The wax oh. cast is then sent to a foundry where they submerge that in like a slip and yes. uh, to make a vessel for that. Then they put that in a kiln and melt that wax out, hence the lost wax. Oh. And then, the bronze goes in that, and then oh, I see. they weld it back together, depending on how many pieces are involved. Some of these Excellent. are uh, two or three pieces, some of them are 13 or 14 pieces. They have ah. to cut up the original to ah. make uh, what they're doing. And then basically weld it together? Uh, Correct. I see. Yeah. Well, that's interesting, but uh, I never have had it explained that in depth, so that's great. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we, looking at my notes, I think uh, 
uh, we better just ask you, you just show us a tour of your oils and stuff. I'm going to step out of the, the, the uh, frame here okay. and let uh, uh, Mr. Emig take over. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you, sir. It. Well, I mean, we could start with the, the paintings on the wall since they're close by here. This one of the dapple gray is a horse, you know, that I've always been fond of. But, uh, and then as we uh, move on down the line, I, I do work with some historical figures and wildlife. This was a, a wolf that I had taken um, some photos of up in uh, Montana last year. And we got the white-tailed deer from Missouri. Everybody's familiar with that one. And down here, uh, as we move to the, down the way here, um, we'll be getting into some of the bronzes and we can kind of take a look at that. We have a, a turkey and a wolf. The one that, that, that in the middle there that I'm kind of fond of is called Eureka. It's a prospector, uh, prospecting for gold and he's found a little nugget. Everybody likes that pearl with the hat on him. This bronze here uh, actually started from a photograph that I took up in South Dakota. Um, and then uh, I was at Silver Dollar City doing demonstrations one year and decided to try to make a bronze out of it. So I um, did the original down there. And uh, the, the nugget is my favorite part of this thing, in addition to the hat on the donkey. And then we have uh, different eras, the Mountain Man era, um, this was done from Colorado, this was done from uh, a shoot up in South Dakota, and uh, then as we move down we've got uh, another bronze that um, is uh, called Buffalo Robe, and um, because of the, obviously the Buffalo Robe. This is a, this next bronze is called Nighthawker, and when they did um, cattle drives, they had to have somebody to watch the herd at night, and he was the night hawker. And then we get into some of the, I do some miniature pieces too. These are little five by sevens. This is um, of a Missouri gorilla, gorilla after the Civil War. And then we get into more wildlife with a, a wolf and a raccoon, buffalo, bear, um, elk. The, this one over here in the corner is a small portrait I did of a paint horse. I, I'm kind of fond of that one too. It, it, uh, I like the uh, looseness of that. And then the uh, buffalo, um, bison bull coming out of the dust. This one here, it, this painting is a 24 by 36. This is the most recent one I've done. Um, it's a Pony Express rider came from an image that I took at a photo shoot out in Kansas. And uh, it's called Thunder Rides with a Little Jack on the Rocks. Uh, if you look closely, there's a jackrabbit down here sitting on the rocks. But, um, and then we get into more bronzes. Um, this is more of the mountain man era in a canoe. Um, also did one of a, a mule called Field Tested. and. Uh, always like mules. This one here is a one of my recent bronzes that just got back from the foundry about a month ago and it's of a cowboy pushing a longhorn up a hill and it's called the Roundup. Um, and then we have uh, some more oil paintings of a friend of mine Bob um, as a uh, shotgunner for a stage line. And then we have um, a small painting of a Indian woman called Contemplation. Several people have mentioned that they care for that one a lot. And this, this one on the end here is an original clay, clay for bronze. This is uh, what I do. If I want to make a bronze, I have to do it an original, and uh, I use an oil-based clay, then this is what the mold is made from. 
This one was called Chief Joseph Surrenders. As we get to the end here of this little section of the gallery, um, I've got a, another fox and an um, old sheep wagon there, it's a couple of miniatures. As we come to this table here, there's uh, a couple of different mediums here. It, it's bronze in the middle, but these others are on the side are fired clay. Um, it's, these are um, kiln fired clay. Like the, this one's one of my favorites, the Joker. Every outfit's got a Joker. But, um, and Sitting Bull and uh, Buffalo Bill uh, are a couple ones that I've uh, done uh, of historical figures. I like to do that sometimes. This one in the middle here is called The Chase is On. This is probably one of my favorite ones. It, it was a commission piece uh, originally, and um, it was a challenge to do. It changed quite a bit in its um, creation, but uh, it's of an Indian on a horseback, Appaloosa, with a spear chasing a buffalo so the tribe can eat for a week. And, uh, but uh, I was pretty pleased with the with the results of that. On the wall, we've just got uh, a few more wildlife and uh, Western genre uh, pieces. And um, this is a, a recent one I, I did from a photo shoot up in uh, Montana last year and uh, of a wolf and a, a duck kind of having a confrontation there. Um, and then as we move to this last table here this is the last piece that I had done it's called collision course and this one had a, a lot of problems with it because it was uh, as I spoke before there's many pieces in a in a bronze and it features a mountain man on a horse rearing with his pack mule and they're coming around the corner of a mountain trail and they come face to face with a mountain lion I can imagine what that felt like. Oh, yes. <laughs> Excellent tour, oh, my goodness. Oh, such great work, awesome work. It reminds me of the old west, that's for sure, Ron. Yeah, that's where my heart now, is. Yes, now you do commission work. Would you like to I tell do, the folks, yeah. uh, the new viewers, how to get a hold of you that, worldwide, yeah, I guess? Yeah, through uh, my website at emigartstudio.com or uh, email is um, ronemig at gmail.com or my phone is 573 Five seven eight eight five three four. Well, that was a great tour, Ron. Thank you, Thank you once appreciate again. It. Thank you for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Well, thank you, Ron and Joanne, for uh, spending time with us here on Spotlight in the Arts. Uh, once again, I have to thank my guests. Uh, do you have any closing words, Ron? I'd just like to thank you very much for the opportunity and for shining a little light on the uh, gallery here because it, it, it's just a wonderful place. It and, sure is. It's uh, really remarkable, actually. Yeah. It's really well done. Very good. Thank yeah. you. And Joanne? Yes, I would like to invite, if you're available, to come by on Saturdays from 1 to 3. Every Saturday from 1 to 3, we feature an artist. Most Saturdays, it's a demonstration, whether you're learning how to paint or sketch or make a basket. The blacksmith will be here demonstrating. So every Saturday from 1 to 3, you can meet and greet an artist or see a demonstration. Oh, excellent, excellent. And I want to thank you once again for being the guest here on Spotlight on the Arts. It's always uh, uh, informational and somewhat inspiring, definitely. You know, what makes one want to pick up some clay, maybe, uh, <laughs> what have you. So, uh, well, that wraps up another Spotlight on the Arts. I want to thank the viewers for uh, watching the shows. And uh, if there's anything you'd like to see as an artist, get a hold of me at uh, Hoppers, H-O-P-P-E-R-S, 444 at gmail.com. Rick J, Spotlight on the Arts, saying, see you next time.
Oof. <sighs>